It is game 26 of the 2024 Banana Ball World Tour. Loved by the people who think ground balls are more democratic. Our comrades over at Zappos. The party animals eked by with a 2-1 victory last night. They can claim the battle for the Tar Heel State against the Bananas this evening. The Bananas trying to force a rubber match tomorrow afternoon. It will be 1 p.m. first pitch on Sunday. But we are here on Saturday night, and let's get a look at the Bananas' defensive alignment. I said, let's get a look at the Bananas' defensive alignment. There it is! It's our right control room. We're rocking and rolling. Left to right in the outfield, it is Reese Alexiades, D.R. Meadows, and Noah Bridges. Third to first in the infield, Gabe Howell, Ryan Cox, Jackson Olsen, and Eric Jones Jr. Behind the dish is Bill Leroy, and towing the slab is Ryan Kellogg. Well, we talked about trick plays in the pregame show 16 last night. The Bananas had eight of them, and of course, Ryan Cox became the first man to both reach and eclipse 50 trick plays on this year's World Tour, and it is so great to see Noah Bridges draw his first start this season for the Bananas in right field. He had 18 trick plays in right last season, and over Overall, has a 94% career success rate on trick plays in banana ball. Let's get a closer look at the big boy on the bump. Six foot six, Ryan Kellogg, the pride of Whitby, Canada, in his second campaign as a banana after seven years of minor league baseball in the Chicago Cubs organization one summer in the Atlantic League. He's one of the best professional pitchers we have on him. And it doesn't feel like it's a stretch to say that his last start was arguably his best this season. Three innings pitched for Ryan Kellogg. Only gave up two hits to the party animals. They did not score a run against the lefty. He allowed no ball for sprints and also struck out a batter and threw only 35 pitches. He was incredibly efficient. Faced just 11 batters and averaged two minutes and 55 seconds per inning out there on the mound. It's tough to see him get taken out of the pitching plan, but the Bananas have stuck to just going once through the order. So Ryan Kellogg just needs to keep the ball on the ground once again tonight and hopefully face the minimum. Here's the Purdy Animals lineup that opposes his Reese Hampton leading off for the 26th time this season. Bryson Bloomer behind him, Jake Skull hitting third. Dalton Cornett cleaning it up. And then Acuff, Thomas, Hussein, Baber, Porter, and Swan. Here's Jesse Cole. On three, I need everyone here to yell, start the clock. One, two, three. Showtime. Showtime indeed, Mr. Cole. The switch hitting center fielder leads it off. Having a terrific third tour, second with the party animals. Hitting 320. A 421 on base percentage. It is second home run of the season last night from the left side. His nine doubles tied for the tour lead there. This one lifted deep out to left. Alexiotis in front of the track, bats it up to himself, slides, falls asleep, and what a way to grab his fifth trick play of the year. A trick play we have never seen before in banana ball. And I was really curious with Alexiotis tipping it up. Who is he tipping it up to? There was nobody in close range. Instead, it's to himself. He gave up his mobility going down to the ground and comes up with a unique trick play. This ball smashed deep out to left. And see you later. Bryson Bloomer climbs the blue monster. And the party animals strike first. Just three pitches into this ball game, and it is Bryson Bloomer hitting the third home run for the party animals already in this three-game series in Durham. And we saw Bloomer a couple weekends ago get his first home run via the inside of the park variety. And now it is just so encouraging for Mike Vivasis and all of Bloomer's party animals teammates to see that power stroke starting to return. We saw him conquer the mini green monster in Hadlock Field in Portland, Maine last year against his good buddy Cowboy Kyle Lewigs. He tackles the 32-foot high wall 
303 feet away from home plate in left. That one traveled 334 feet. Trackman had the exit velo at 95 miles an hour. One two count on Jake Skull. 14 years of minor league baseball experience between the pitcher and hitter here. And Kellogg's going to win the battle with Patuk bouncing. He thinks about a trick play and ends up handling that the old fashioned style. That's a big bounce back out after the boomer bomb. And one that puts a little bit of a smile on Ryan Kellogg's face as well, which I think is really important. Just able to get him to laugh a little bit and have a little fun fielding his position for once. Dalton Cornette squibs this one foul. The extra hitter here for the second straight night. Lines this one over Cox. And he just continues to impress. Every step of his three world tours, all of them with the party animals. The pride of Pippa Passes, Kentucky, who stayed home to go to college at Alice Lloyd, one of the best baseball players in that school's illustrious history. Ended up being in a dorm about 15 feet from his childhood home, playing ball for his dad, Scott. He is just a professional hitter. And it's really showed lately Dalton Cornett with hits in nine of his last 10 games for the Animals. Batting average at 319. That is climbing. Foul ball, Chase Aka. Two home runs and seven doubles for the sophomore on the party Animals. And he loves peppering the ball down the left field line. You took the words right out of my mouth there. Had so many doubles down the line last year for the party animals. Finished last year's tour with 20. And has just continued to be a pretty pull-happy hitter. And one who tries and sneaks them in between those lines for extra bases. We'll get another 2-2 from Ryan Kellogg. Five pitch mix, two seam and four seam fastballs. And then a change up slider and a curveball to round it out. Gets in on the hands of Aka. Bridges coming in. He'll grab it for out number three. A solo home run from Bryson Bloomer. As the party animals one run up in the first, the Nanners will need one run to tie the inning, two runs to win it. Remember, every inning is a game within itself in banana ball. Points are the way you will win yourself a ball game. Here's how the party animals align defensively as they look to claim the first point available for the second straight night. In the outfield, left to right, it is Tanner Thomas and then Hampton and Skull. In the infield, third to first, you see Jordan Hussein, Acuff, Dustin Baber, and Bloomer over at first base. Taj Porter is catching tonight, and Garrett Delano gets the start on the bump. Yeah, we saw Tanner Thomas get the night off last night. Well, he was DHing for the party and also not in the field, but he'll look to get his third trick play tonight in some capacity. Meanwhile, Bryson Bloomer manning first base a second straight game due to a little bit of a hamper Jason Swan, who's the DH tonight. In Bloomer's first start at first base, looked for the most part very comfortable, said he enjoyed getting the action back there, and also picked up a trick play for the animals. Let's get a quick peek at the world's slowest race. Predictably, nothing is happening. Five toddlers, nobody is moving, although it is interesting. The toddler farthest away with a little bit of a crouch action going on. We'll take a peek at Garrett Delano while we wait for the kids to find some inspiration to head towards their parents. Delano in his third world tour, as you get a little picture-in-picture -picture action there, you look at his numbers, he's been one of the best pitchers this season, which is no surprise. He's been one of the best over the last three years. This is start numero ocho for number triple seven on the mound for the Party Animals. And in his last appearance, Party Animals used an opener, so Garrett Delano came out for relief and pitched across five innings, was only credited with three. Gave up six hits, three runs, two of which were earned, and gave up two ball four sprints, had three strikeouts. He unfortunately was handed the loss because he allowed the Bananas to record walk-offs in the sixth, seventh, and eighth innings. Wow, that terrific analysis was getting sent to your ears, your eyeballs, sending you the victory for that youngster in the world's slowest race. Here's the Bananas starting lineup. D.R. Meadows and Bill Leroy, the only guys who are due to swing it in the first because a bloop and a blast will walk this inning off for the Nanners. But behind them, Dan Oberst, Michael Deeb, and Eric Jones Jr. in the middle. And then the bottom four, 
Reese Alexiadis, check that, bottom five. Now it's the bottom four. Gabe Howell, Noah Bridges, Jackson Olsen, and Ryan Cox. Hot shot, but straight to his counterpart, and Reese Hampton is out of his mind. A Baker's dozen on the trick plays on the tour. He is automatic. I mean, he just makes the play look so easy out there in center field. No fear, regardless of how hard a ball is hit to him. Comfortable, just going behind the back. Had the same kind of trick play last night, and now has one in back-to-back -back contests. As Bill Leroy steps up to the plate, it is now time, unfortunately, for me to let everybody know in the YouTube chat as well as the K-Club chat, in the middle of the second inning, you, the great BTV watchers, will get to roast myself and Josh Tolepsky. Whatever you would like to say, as deep as cuts as you could ever dream up, we're big boys, we can handle it. I've seen a lot of discussion about my height in the chat as I <laughs> proclaimed myself a short king. I'd like to declare it that I am five feet eight inches. So anybody thinking that the roast would be height themed, there's the official numbers. Uh, I've, I've seen some discussion about the amount of layers that I wear during broadcasts as Bill Leroy goes down swinging Garrett Delano with his first punch out of the evening. And uh, he's gonna hit the crab celebration and uh, we do need to let the people know, Biko, we, we're prepared, we have tissues here in the booth. Correct. Josh always keeps them on hand. He's a very emotional man. The party at... <laughs> Easy. <laughs> this game is <laughs> just <laughs> starting. I've got the roast. My goodness. goodness. It's in my blood. It's in my blood. I've, I've got it pumping. We're not supposed to roast each other, but I'm just starting to feel the effects of the silliness in my bones here. 1-1 uh, count. One Back to the action on the field. Six-year banana, Dan Ober squaring off against his jiu-jitsu sparring partner, Garrett Delano. And it looks like Dan Ober wins the battle. How about that for suspense? We've got a bizarre angle on this field. Josh and I pretty much completely even with the first base bag. So that bouncer off the bat looked like it was more towards your traditional shortstop spot. Turns out it was right up the middle and Ober shows his wheels. He's got an infield single. Yeah, just one of those slow choppers up the middle. Chase Acuff was playing Dan a little more to pull for the party animals. And now it's Chase Acuff rushing to the back, seeing Dan Obers trying to get a steal on Garrett Delano before he fired the pitch to home plate. The party animals pick off Dan and claim the first point of this ball game. First time in seven tries, Dan Oberst has been caught stealing this year. Tried to get a great jump. Turns out he was far too quick. We've got to get it down to Drake Toll because on Bally Live, he is hosting the first ever Party Animals Dugout broadcast. Drake, you have the floor, buddy. Brett, what do you have for Emily and I? She's the queen of banana foster, of course. Last year was a big time because I got to donate my hair. It hasn't been really long enough for me to donate my hair, but something I can donate all the time, the gift that keeps on giving is my chest hair. So I think today is a no better time for me to get down and dirty. Stop it. Get my chest hair out I and I, I can cut it and I can donate it and no. that way somebody can use it. I don't think Never. it works like that, Betty. That's I mean, they told me anything helps. So like, no, no matter no. what. What are you doing? Are you really good at, no, 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 okay. Um, Brett, Brett, what is she going to do with your chest hair? You cannot undo that. No, everything she does, she does it correctly, so I'm just going to keep on going. <laughs> Brett, okay. Emily, how much money did they make off of Brett's shaved head so last year? He raised over 22000 for his actual <laughs> hair, uh, which is fabulous, but we could actually do something with that hair. That was actually donated to Wigs for Kids, but, but this, I don't think we can do anything with, buddy. You make miracles all the time, so I think no matter what, with this, you... <laughs> that is just a little bit of a taste of what's going on on Bally Live in the first ever Party Animals dugout broadcast. I'm sure there's some good that could be put to use with Brett Helton's chest hair. I'm just perplexed at the whole situation, if I'm going to be honest. Drake seemed pretty fired up about something tonight, and I can only imagine that, that those hijinks are what they were. Soft tapper rolls all the way to Jones Jr. at first. <laughs> Kellogg hustling over, 
wanted to be a part of the fun, but it's going to be a swinging bunt bouncer all the way to the Nanners' first baseman. Yeah, just one of those plays for Ryan Kellogg where I think more than anything, he wanted to make sure he got his exercise tonight. Running over to the first base bag where Eric Jones Jr. just fielded it perfectly. Just like Reginald Horton says, you got to get your steps in. Stay accountable, stay afloatable. Now Jordan Hussein sends that one foul. He's got a 1-1 count on him. Four for 18 in the young career of the Party Animals third baseman. Nice backdoor slider. Steals a strike for Kellogg. And he's back in the driver's seat. Tries the same pitch. Just misses a tad out. You know, Josh, I struggle growing facial hair since we're ever closer to this incoming roast. Two outs away from it. It's, that one's peppered off the blue monster, but foul by Hussein. I, I feel like I could take that chest hair and with some Elmer's glue just patch it myself the first beard of my life. I don't think you want to use Elmer's glue. I think we've got to use a hot glue gun for you. Hot glue. That seems like it would do irreparable damage. <laughs> <laughs> a strikeout for Kellogg. Goes back to the slider. Gets his second K. No, that's not right, Biko. Gets his first K of the ball game. I was thinking about all the strikeouts we saw from the Nanners starter last night, Noah Nisnik, who picked up four across three frames. And I was still in highlight o'clock. There is punch out number one for Kellogg. Nice blender. Sets him up for a battle with Dustin Baber, the party animal's second baseman. In 229 in his second world tour. And he has himself a 1 1 count. And a fun milestone for Dustin Baber tonight, starting in his 99th consecutive game at second base for Baber and if he's placing that starting lineup at second again tomorrow during the finale day game at 1 p.m. Dustin Baber will be the first man in banana ball history to have 100 consecutive starts at a position. It's a heck of a beginning to his night in his 99th straight start at second. He's aboard with two down for the switch hitting catcher Taj Porter. Take a look at the numbers in his rookie banana ball campaign, he's been fantastic. Hitting 306, reaching base at a 386 clip across college and his young professional career. No matter where the batting average is, you always see the OBP at or above 400. I mean, this guy just knows how to get aboard. Yeah, Tosh Porter actually with a 386 OBP right now this season, but that is still above tour average. Tour average 364 entering play tonight. So. Taj, what he's worried about is getting on base. He's very happy with where he's at. And he's also happy with the results he's had against Ryan Kellogg. Three for five this season. And this one going to run a little inside on Taj. And he'll reach via the hit by pitch. He's a little woozy coming out of the box. Stumbling, trying to get his bearings. And he finally finds his footing as he rumbles over to first. Third time on the tour, he's been plunked. Uh, first time by a pitcher not named Kyle Lewigs. Fun fact there, to the 10 hole we go. And what a weapon the animals keep at the bottom of the order. Wow, that was a generous strike call from Vincent Chapman for Kellogg to jump ahead of Jason Swan, who lines this one the opposite way, but grabbed on a dive by Noah Bridges. Swan hitting 354 to pace the entire Party Animals team. Good lumber there, but into Bridges territory. Yeah, right after returning from a two-game absence, it's a barrel from Jason Swan, and just an unfortunate hard hit out. Great play by Noah Bridges to bail Ryan Kellogg out of a tough situation. As you get a couple ganders at the fantastic play by the pride of Four Oaks, North Carolina. The folks here in DBAP. Oh, hey, welcome up into the broadcast booth. Uh, they are getting a sing-off. We are getting a roast. And I am diving into some of the hand-picked comments from our coordinating producer, Chad Reese. It starts off from Fluffy Crusher one in the YouTube chat. Said, bro so small, he has to have one of those dino grabbers to grab something on the top shelf. Yep, that's good. That's That was for me. Josh is six feet tall, so 
obviously that wouldn't work for work for my broadcast partner. Josh, what do you have for us here, buddy? Uh, this one also is directed at you, I yeah. believe, yeah. Uh, from RAB6969, wondering, Biko, do you stand on crates in the press box? I actually don't, unlike Vincent Chapman when Dakota stilts Albertan comes up to the dish. No, I mean, if I stood on a crate, then Josh would have to stand on a crate because, you know, we have to be uh, aligned in height. Uh, okay, that's good. I've got one for you. Uh, from Brad Reeder, when is Josh going to hit puberty? That stash is as dirty as it gets. Is it a ballpoint or marker? <laughs> <laughs> that's, that's pretty good. That's I can good. appreciate that one. <laughs> uh, this one coming from Stony 9599 My Roast Biko. Here's the actual, actual definition of ascertain. <laughs> Something out for certain, make sure of, to make sure of. Yeah, people get on my case for ascertain all the time. I've gotten contact forms about it. I simply don't care. I use the word how I want to use it. <laughs> like, I just, I really like using it in a state of to gain control of and that's my choice how about this double between the legs but deeb hustling down the line beats it out and it's going to be a trick play miss for dustin baber looked like it was going to be a beauty but the kid out of davie florida busting it beats it out yeah it was a slow roller to second base and you see here from dustin baber he does a couple dribbles between the legs and then decided for a little glove flip instead of just an underhand toss and i think it was that decision which is what helped michael deeb get in safely at first base so the potential inning winning run is at first base flash the kid pinch runs for his fellow fourth year banana and Eric Jones Jr. in his third campaign in yellow tries to hold up. Gnarly two seam there from Delano. Sneaks it past him. Just like Noah Bridges, Eric Jones Jr. playing in his home state. Originally born in Jacksonville, but spent most of his youth in Charlotte. Moved there around two years old. Chops this one down the third base line. Hussein gets one at second. Baber to first. Not in time. EJ beats the rap, but a heck of a job by the animals to get flash off the bases. Yeah, more than anything, you want to get the lead runner, especially if it's Malachi Mitchell, the fastest man in banana ball. So a good lead out gotten and good hustle by Eric Jones Jr. making that just a fielder's choice. It'll go 5-4 for everybody scoring at home. And now the baton pass to Reese Alexiadis as EJ is going to take second on the wild pitch. Throw from Porter goes into center, but Hampton scampering in. EJ thought about third and doesn't test the, the arm of his fellow Tar Heel homestater. Hampton also out of Charlotte. And it's good enough to get the inning winning run into scoring position at second. Although, of course, being 90 feet away with less than two outs would mean that Alexiadis could win the inning on a productive out. But the 2023 Pioneer League MVP who's playing for the Ogden Raptors with an, with an advantageous count. Make it three balls and no strikes. Yeah, and this has been situations that have kind of been recurring for Garrett Delano. Wild pitches that have gotten Bananas up into scoring position and then followed by kind of a lack of control. Rare lack of control from Delano. Here it's Reese Alexiadis who will earn the ball for sprint and collect the walk off. Eric Jones Jr. comes around to score and through two innings of play, we've got a 1-1 ball game. Remember in banana ball when ball four is fired, it is a sprint, not a walk. So all seven fielders behind the pitcher and catcher have to touch the ball before it is live. And that means if anybody's in scoring position, they are going to score unless they trip, fall down, and have some kind of extreme accident, which we have not seen yet in Banana Ball's five-year history. I digress. Let's get it down to Maceo Harrison as the fellas will dance us to the third inning. We're not at one, one point apiece.
a job, as per usual, from Maceo Harrison. He grabs DeClue, Helton, Ballholm, and Lealios for the party animals. It's Nick Ziegler, Mitchell. And I couldn't catch the last banana before they escaped to the dugout. To be determined. Top of the order for the animals here in the top of the third. East Hampton drove one to the track and left his first time. Ended up being a trick play for Alexiades. He sends this one into the left field corner. And he'll be the first man on the tour to reach double digit doubles. That's his 10th of the season. Yeah, great piece of hitting by Reese Hampton, and he shared that he thinks Ryan Kellogg's one of the tougher guys to bat against in banana ball. So always feeling good when he can get extra bases against the lefty and keep it fair, tucked in that side, that left field line. So Reese again, first man to double digits in doubles and hoping to score another run for the party animals here in the third. Here is the boomer, blasted a ball over the 32 foot high wall and left his first time. Solo home run that won the first inning for the animals. And now Kellogg, Olsen, Cox and Meadows gathering at the middle of the diamond for a beautiful choreographed dance. The pitch to Bryson smoked dead center nobody's there Alexiades looks up and watches this one sail out of here two plate appearances two tater tots for Bryson Bloomer he's got flames coming out of his eyeballs an unreal performance from Bryson Bloomer to start this game tonight we have seen only two multi home run games in the history of banana ball and both of them belong to the boomer. He is the great Bloombino. He brought the pop to Durham. That thing out to the farthest part of this ballpark. Center field wall 390 feet away. Actually add five to that, 395. And Bloomer conquers it out to left center. That one traveled 404 feet, according to Trackman. All three runs tonight for the animals driven in by their first baseman. And now Jake Skoll has a piece of banana ball history. He has reached base safely in 31 straight games. That breaks the tie he had at 30 apiece with his center fielder and best friend, Reese Hampton. Quite the accomplishment for Jake Skull, one of the most consistent players we've ever seen in this young sport. And I'm sure something that he's going to be celebrating after this ball game as he takes off on the 0-1 pitch and will get in safely with a stolen base for the Animals, just trying to pile on more runs here against Kellogg in the third. Eighth base swiped on the season for Skoll, nearly got clocked by the throw from Porter, who, or check that, from Leroy, who didn't have a chance to grab the Nanners right fielder, as this one roped and into right field. Olsen couldn't grab the scoop, never even got a glove on it. The throw from Bridges cut off by EJ, who had to make a heck of a run to grab that thing that looked like it was heading towards the party animals dugout. Kellogg was behind him, and the ball did sneak the Nanners first baseman. And the party animals top four with fourth straight to kick off the third. Acuff back up the middle. It's officially an ambush. Skoll scores five straight hits for the animals to begin the third inning. Chase Acuff grabs RBI number 20 on his terrific second season. Had a terrific pitcher's duel last night. The party animals only allowed one run across nine innings. Eight credited innings pitched because of the walk-off in the fifth with no outs. And the bananas only allowed one in the first and three in the sixth. Tonight, the party animals won the first inning one nothing. The bananas did the same in the second. And now the animals have plated three here in the third. Still nobody out. And what's remarkable is we've seen across the first three games here in Durham Bulls Athletic Park, and 
banana ball history. A lot of low scoring contests and it's pretty interesting that Bryson Bloomer, of all people, one of the batters who talked to me last night and said that it's a little hard to pick up the ball as a batter in this ballpark with a little bit of a different batter's eye in center field with the shrubbery and because of the yellow line across the outfield wall messes with the yellow banana ball as this one is hit out to right field. Noah Bridges tries to lay out and will not come up with it and Tanner Thomas keeps the train rolling for the animals with an RBI double. He drives in his fellow third year party animal, Dalton Cornett. Acuff holds up at third. Mr. Tinder Thomas with his seventh two bagger of the season, ninth extra base hit. And it is six consecutive hits to begin the third for the party animals. A home run, two doubles and three singles. See if Jordan Hussein can keep the party going. Hot shot gobbled up by Howell. He knocks it down and across the diamond just in time to get his speedy counterpart. And finally, seven batters into the inning. Ryan Kellogg has an out. And a pretty convenient spot for that ball to be hit as Gabe Howell was able to check Chase Acuff over at third before being able to throw across the diamond and get that big first out. Now Dustin Baber, who singled back up the middle an inning ago. And finds himself quickly behind no balls and two strikes. Because he fouled the ball off, he can leave the batter's box and take as much time as he needs before getting back in. Another one chopped foul. This one off of his own persons. And we'll wait for another 0-2. And I think this is why we've seen the Bananas change up their pitching plans a little more this season. This is likely going to be the last inning for Ryan Kellogg. And again, it's once the party animals see a guy a second time around, they are able to make the adjustments. And now Dustin Baber will drive in a run with a single up the middle. And D.R. Meadows threw home, which allowed Dustin Baber to scamper up to second base. Baber grabs a stake. Fifth run of the inning for the Animals. Tanner Thomas was rumbling around third, looking like he was gonna try and score, and then Vava gave him a big stop sign, which ended up being terrific for the Animals. With the Meadows throw going all the way home on the fly. Great base running by Baber. How about the walk up here from Taj Porter? A lot of energy, a lot of emotion in that one, as per usual from Taj. Now Kellogg has Thomas off of third. We've got ourselves a pickle. Howell running him back towards the plate, and Leroy will grab his bananas in the pants partner. Porter was halfway to second. He retreats back to first as nobody was home there. Big second out of the inning for the Nanners. It'll be a 1-5-2 fielder's choice. Here's the donut hitter, Jason Swan. A curious pick for a man who has to strike out for the full capacity crowd here in DBAP to be gifted free donuts from Duncan. He's only struck out six times on the year in 85 total plate appearances. And as I mentioned, after he lined out to Bridges and right his first time, he's pacing the party animals with his 354 batting average. And third best on the team with his 400 OBP. Kellogg is a strike away though. Runners on the corners, deuces are wild. It's put in play. Another opportunity for Bridges who eyes it up and grabs it to put an end to the damage. Five runs for the Animals on seven hits as they strand a pair, and we'll get it down to Jesse Cole for a brand new promo. It is called In the Sack Relay. Let's take the field, come over here right next to me, and we want to get an idea. And your name? Chrissy. Matt. And how many years have you been married? It'll be 19 in October. 19 years, all right. Brett. Catherine. And how many years have you been married? 19. 
All right, when you guys say you're pretty good, 19 years, you're pretty good couples, you know each other, you're feeling good. All right, so let's bring a challenge forth and see how it goes. Bring forth the sacks. This is a new challenge called In the Sack Race. Gentlemen, men, out to your corner over there. And we are going to see how good you guys are in the sack. So here's how it's going to work. The women have to get in the sack, run to the men. The men have to get in the sack and race back here to the finish line. Women, are you ready? On your marks, get set, go. Here we go. An old-fashioned sack race. You better go. Keep it going. It looks like Chrissy's in the lead. Catherine's behind. There she goes to Matt. Here we go. All right, let's see how good he is. All right. And Matt is quick to get in the sack. And look how fast Matt gets in the sack. Wait, they are down in the sack. Chrissy and Matt off to a great lead. That does not look good, Brett and Catherine. Chrissy and Matt are very good in the sack. Very fast to the finish line here. Five, four, but they got to make it. And it looks like our winner. Let's hear it for Chrissy and Matt. Okay, Jesse Cole never thought I'd heard you say that, whether on a baseball field or not. Uh, well, we have those folks winning the sack race, breaking moves here on BTV. The winner of the world's slowest race back in the middle of the first inning was Banks Banning Bowen. That would be our beloved czar of tickets nephew, Carson Bowen. Mr. Banks banning Bowen, little BBB, congratulations. That was a landslide victory. I mean, nobody was close to Banks. Bouncer to Aka, down to a knee. He bounces it to himself. Nice trick play for the pride of St. Petersburg, Florida, 35th on the year. Yeah, Chase Aka doesn't try and do too much there, and with the party animals up five runs, here in the third inning. They've got a lot of room to try some trick plays here while getting three outs against the Bananas. As we come out of the replay, we see Noah Bridges coming from the stands, doing his best Justin Bieber impersonation. You know, I've often thought, if Noah Bridges was my boyfriend, what would it be like? He's laying it all out right here. Now I know. He's explaining the whole deal. Pretty unique that you get that. I know a lot of people out in the world upset that at least currently, Noah Bridges cannot be their boyfriend as he has been shacked up. Now, do you think Noah Bridges was your boyfriend, my, my good buddy? Do you think that he would dance like this for you whenever you ask? Uh, great question. I'm glad you ponder that. I've pondered it a lot myself. Uh, yes, I think so. He's an absolute gentleman, a true mensch, as we say up near the Big Apple. And he bombs this one deep to right. It's unfortunately going to be warning track power. A trick play missed there by Jake Skoll, who tried to grab it behind his back. And Bridges is going to have three bases on the TPM. Yeah, Noah Bridges never stopped hustling there, regardless of whether who Jake Skull was going to try for the trick play or not. But this is exactly what we talked about a play ago. Chase Acuff starting the inning off with the trick play. For the party animals right now, they've got so much room to allow a run or two to the bananas that they're trying to just practice some trick plays here and hopefully up the numbers and continue to skyrocket the average number of trick plays we've seen over the last couple of games. Shot out to left center. Hampton, his horse, approaching the wall. That thing clangs off it. Bridges will score easily. Jackson Olsen zooming into second with, with his 10th double of the tour. Hampton had separated himself for all but one half inning. And Olsen catches up. The two are tied at 10 doubles apiece at the top of the tour. How about Jackie? 
Two hits on the first two pitches thrown to him last night. The double he peppered off the blue monster in left center. And then a screaming line drive back up the middle. He's got himself his second extra base hit of the series here in Durham. And now Ryan Cox at the dish, rolls this one over between the legs. Bryson Bloomer takes it to first himself. Galeno furious that he wasn't involved in that. Bloomer says, my bad. Next time I'll toss you the ball. We get another gander. That trick play number 10 on the tour for Bloomer anyhow. We've seen Garrett Delano six trick plays on this year's World Tour, which is pacing all pitchers. I mean, he was just thinking about possibly collecting his seventh there in a creative way with his buddy at first base. No one count on DR Meadows at the top of the order. One run is home. The Bananas need four more to tie this inning and prevent the party animals from claiming the first or the second point on their night. Cutter dances outside. Meadows shot a ball to center his first time, his counterpart. Hampton made a fantastic play on it, grabbing it behind his back for the trick play. All right, Garrett, 550. Um, can I get a K? Oh! Special swing at that. <laughs> okay. That's everything we get from Wheel of Fortune. Thomas calls off Hampton in left center. Delano gives up his second unearned run of the ball game. Still has not given up an earned run. And the party animals retake the lead. They're up two points to one. Feeling strong, and we figured we would put it on display with some of our strongest fans in the Banana Land. Down Mr. To the Banana Olympia professor for Mr. Olympia. It is a good old fashioned body pose down. Three contestants. What is your name? Gabe Wakanti. Gabe, how old are you? 17. All right, young stud here. Let's see that pose. Oh, he rolls up the sleeve. Look at that tricep. Bicep with the with the javelin pose. That's 17 over here. All right. Your name? Brandon. Brandon, how old are you? 38. That's my age, man. Represent. Let's see what 38 looks like. Show to him. Oh, nice bicep action. Oh, look at that back. He's been hitting the back at the gym. And, um, uh, sir, what is your name? David. David, how old are you? 65. All right, David. Let's see what you got. Oh! <laughs> Fans, it's time to pick a winner. What did we think is the winner? Game. Is our winner Brandon? Or is it David? Your Durham, Mr. Banana Olympia! Congratulations, David. That is a much sought after award right there. Take a look at Jared Donaldson, first man out of the pen for the Bananas, the splitter specialist in his third campaign as an inner second world tour, takes over from Ryan Kella. And pitched very well in Durham Bulls Athletic Park last season. Six strong innings, only gave up four hits and two earned runs to the party animals while striking out six. Opponents batting 280 against him this season. The main issue overall for Donnie, it's been control of the strike zone. He's issued 12 ball four sprints this season. That is the second most amongst Bananas pitchers. Second straight inning that starts at the top of the order for the Animals after they batted around in the third. And one pitch in, Vincent Chapman has dusted off the dish, sent his mask flying, nearly landed on Reese Hampton. He's taken a knee chatting with Bill Leroy as Vincent simply goes buck wild 
for the full capacity crowd. He reached a max shakes per second, 95 shakes per second, according to Trackman. Really impressive performance from Vince. Yeah, that's elite numbers right there. Hampton swings it from the left side for the first time tonight. His two trips to the dish against Ryan Kellogg. The lefty, of course, from the right side, he flew out and doubled. Anything over 80 shakes per second is considered phenomenal. Yeah, that's true. I mean, Chapman really in a land of his own when it comes to shakes per second. How about this? Wow. Jackson Olsen had a little bit of trouble getting that ball through the wickets, but he does just in time for trick play number 27. It wasn't so much as of a Jackson Olsen problem as it was Eric Jones Jr. having to get over to that first base bag. That's why you see a little bit of a stutter from Jackson Olsen, and luckily that delay did not hinder him from getting that throw to first base. Peter grazes the outside corner, pitcher's pitch. Donnie ahead of his 2022 CPL Bananas teammate Bryson Bloomer as that one gets the top of the zone. And quickly 0-2. The Boomer with two bombs tonight. A solo home run and then a two-run shot. And evidently, Vincent Chapman's, he called one of those a ball. I guess maybe he called the first one a ball. Looked like he called it a strike to me. It will be a 2-2 count. Check swing. Well, scraper, did he touch it, is the question. I believe the count is full. I don't think Bryson Bloomer touched that ball. It doesn't matter. This one a mile high in the infield. Howell takes control of the situation and secures out number two. A wacky series of events it's during bizarre. that Bryson Bloomer it's AB. <laughs> and uh, all of it to end with a pop fly in the glove of Gabe Howell. <laughs> Donnie looking sharp so far, though. <laughs> That's a fact. Rather anticlimactic. Here is Jake's goal, one for two on the night. His single in the third inning extended his on-base streak to a banana ball record 31 straight games. I would wager if an MVP ballot was casted just a little more than two months into this tour, most folks would be selecting this man, Jake's goal, as he squibs that one foul. One, two, count on him. He's hitting 3.30. He's pacing the party animals with a 4.35 on base percentage. His four home runs, his three triples, and coming into the game, his nine doubles were all either tied or stood alone at the top of the door. He's pacing all hitters with 27 runs scored and 27 runs driven in. He's playing at a very elite level and finished a triple shy of the cycle last night. And he's got at least one run batted in in 11 of his past 12 games for the party animals. Quite the presence in this three hole. This one driven out to left. Alexiades is going to have to play it one hop off the wall. Skull digging for second and he jogs in there standing with his 10th double of the tour. So three guys entered this game with nine two-baggers on the season. Reese Hampton, Jackson Olsen, and Jake Skull. They all have a double, and now they're all tied for the tour lead with 10 apiece. And we saw Jake Skull last night collect a double going to the opposite field. So really a smart hitter knowing to play with this blue monster out there in left field. Peter just misses up from the 2022 Peach Belt Conference Pitcher of the Year. And make it two heaters, two balls. That two-seamer just misses the top inner half of the plate. Felton Cornette, two for two. Two well-struck singles. Has to jackknife out of the way of that fastball. And Donaldson has to throw a strike or else Skull will score from second. He does just that. Dials up a heater right down Broadway. And sometimes that's all you need as a pitcher, just getting that strike for the first time out of the stretch. Now coming set with a 3-1 pitch, and it will miss high to Dalton Cornett. And so the party animals will score a run here in the top of the fourth inning and now have a chance to jump out to a three points to one lead if they can keep the bananas off the board in the bottom half. 
Skull scores for the second time tonight. He's now up to 29 runs scored. And he will fire an arrow up into the air. It's arrow roulette o'clock. And how about this? It turns out the man who scored ends up with the arrow stuck between the butt cheeks and will worm his way back to the dugout. Oh, banana ball. He never ceased to amaze me as Sean Fluke finally pulls that sucker out. Boy, I hope that doesn't take the party animals MVP out of their lineup tonight. Josh, I've got a funny feeling he's going to come out of it A-OK. -okay. Rub some dirt on it. That's what my dad <laughs> should, always said. It should do the trick. Acuff went around, according to first base umpire Andrew Bartman. Got a pretty good angle over here. I disagree with the call. My opinion doesn't matter at all. Acuff behind 0-2. He flew out his first time. RBI single last trip to the dish. Broadcaster and umpire switch position in the game. <laughs> yeah. Let's try, Let's that, try one. that one on for size. I, I would like that tomorrow. <laughs> 1 p.m. start in the finale in Durham on Sunday. As this one is chopped, going to be a tough play. Howell Bearhands didn't have a chance. Acuff runs very well. Beats it out for an infield single. He's two for three as Cornette is up to second base. And as Josh mentioned, it was a terrific start to his outing for Donnie. He is looking sharp. Grounder and a pop out against Hampton and Bloomer, two of the best hitters we've ever seen in banana ball, but then Skull with the two out double. Donnie loses the zone against Cornette and gifts the party animals a run. Tough luck on that one. He really wins the battle emotionally, does it in the scorebook, and Tanner Thomas is all of a sudden red hot. He serves that one to right. Cornette will score from second. Mr. Tinder Thomas is two for three and has driven in a run in back-to-back -back innings. And this is just incredible for Tanner Thomas. He had three hits last night. It was his first three-hit game of the season. Now has two hits in this contest. And before these two games, he was four for his last 30 at the plate. That's baseball. That's banana ball for you. You can become red hot out of nowhere. That one, a bouncer back to the backstop. Hussein is going to steal first base. How about that for Jordan? His first steal of first here in his rookie banana ball campaign. And that loads the bases for Baber. Just good banana ball feel from Jordan Hussein. We've seen on a couple of other pitches. Hussein has looked back, seeing if they get away from the catcher. He's a guy who is very okay with surrendering an at-bat to get on base and reach safely for the party animals. He does it for the first time in his career. Baber will down a beverage, two for two on his night with a run driven in. I mean, you can see the wheels turning in Jordan's head as that happens. He was in baseball mode for a second. I spent a couple years at Crowder College, then finished with three years at the University of Arkansas at Little Rock. Two years of pro ball before banana ball, one in the Frontier League. Last year, he was in the US PBL. Was the shortstop on Team Palestine's World Baseball Classic team this past fall. And now he's a banana baller and figuring it out quickly. Noah Bridges covers a lot of ground in right. That will limit the damage to just two runs as the animals strand the bases loaded. What a two-out rally. Double sprint, single, single, steal of first. And the party animals up one point, looking to double their lead in that all-important points department. It's Hey Baby O'Clock. Jesse Cole leading the folks here in the age-old tradition in Banana Land. And I think that's a perfect opportunity for me to get back to some of our favorites from the middle of the second inning roast of Josh Tolevsky and Biko Scala. I'm going to go to you, John Kelly. He says in the YouTube chat, and by the way, in the K-Club chat, we were looking for stuff. You folks are just too nice for us. It was nothing but sunshine and rainbows. In fact, my mom even said that I got the height in the family, which is true when it comes to the Polkiris. In the YouTube chat, there was a lot to work with. John says, Josh gets excited about everything. Sun comes up, it's morning! Light turns green, <laughs> it's go time! Someone holds the door for him, and a big old thank you for holding that door. Thank you, 
Sean for submitting that one. Really good stuff from Mr. Kelly. Uh, Keegan Woods all the way from <laughs> all the way from the control room says Biko shops at Baby Gap. It's a simple one. Yeah, just a good size joke. Uh, yeah. Pie's awesome. <laughs> you guys have more layers than friends. How how'd you know? Well, speak for yourself, Josh. I don't wear a lot of layers, so it, it's a little easier for me to reach that benchmark. You, which my Uncle Mark would be very proud of you, you pride yourself on layers. Uh, yeah, just because I'm a cold-natured individual, I can't really help it. And Uncle Mark Scala says, there's no such thing as bad clothing. Well, check that. That's not his quote at all. There's no such thing as bad weather, only bad clothing. Huh. Yeah, you're always prepared for any situation that may arise. Uh, Steve Kellogg, here's some... <laughs> Here's a roast from the K-Club. Says Josh keeps a full-size cardboard cutout of Bryce Harper under his bed. Steve, you watch it. You watch it right now. I don't do that. Never, never. That guy's been a division rival of Josh's Braves his entire career. That was Kidding that was me? a low blow oh. for Mr. Kellogg. Oh. Uh, Sam Northcutt says Josh eat a big hot dog and can't eat it all. <laughs> that is also. <laughs> So not true. I have put down 10 drum dogs this season. Those are hot dogs at Grayson Stadium for anybody that doesn't know. Not cooked by our incredible director of uh, hot dogs. That's actually his official title, Neil Trumlin. But Josh thinks they are all cooked by Neil personally. So they're drum dogs. I'm Josh's pretty role. sure they are. Okay, yep, I'll, I'll go with that. This one misses the outside corner. Four straight bad ones to Bill Leroy. He's gonna pump the brakes and be content with a one-base sprint. That's a mighty important one. The party animals lead the fourth inning two runs to nothing. And four pitches into the bottom half. All of a sudden, Dan Oberst, the mighty man he is, represents the inning tying run at the dish. Yep, three home runs this season for Dan. And if he can conquer the blue monster here, would tie the inning at two runs apiece. And neither the bananas nor the party animals would come away with a point in this inning. This one hit towards us in the press box. It's going to leave Durham Bulls Athletic Park. Bill's incredible seventh season as Banana continues. That is his ninth ball for sprint compared to just eight strikeouts. That counts the one he had in the first inning tonight. His on base percentage is back up to 100. Or check that. That wouldn't be very impressive. It's back up to 500 right on the dot. Only one stolen base attempt on the tour. He was successful in it. Well outside, Porter checks on Leroy, who's back standing. Yeah, you see Bill trying to fake out both Garrett Delano and Tosh Porter. He picks his situations to run very wisely. He's actually never been thrown out in his banana ball career while trying to steal. Chopper to third, Hussein goes to second for one, Baber to first, in time! Party animals go around the horn for a twin killing. No time for trick plays for the party animals, it's all about turning two, and Jordan Hussein fields that one perfectly, and Dustin Baber with a great job getting the throw over there at second base and having one heck of a turn and fire to Bryson Bloomer with a nice stretch. They double up the bananas here on the fourth. Mighty impressive, considering the speed of Danny Barrels, who reached on an infield single his first time. That fastball just misses the inside corner. 1-0 on Michael Deeb, who reached on a trick play missed by Baber his first time. That one a hair down, make it two balls, no strikes. To fully accomplish our roast cleanup here, Sarah Cass says, Josh looks like a no-name celebrity going to Walmart with a fake mustache to blend in. Four straight bad ones. That one a hair down as well. Second four-pitch sprint of the inning. But thanks to the double play, it's still not too scary for the animals. Deep aboard does mean that the man tied for the tour lead in home runs represents the inning tying run though in Eric Jones Jr. Yeah, it's still a good situation for Eric Jones Jr. Again, batted 750 in Durham Bulls Athletic Park last season and left the yard. So, man who feels pretty comfortable 
batting in this ballpark and in his home state of North Carolina. He was trying to tie the inning in one fell swoop there. That's what the kids call a daddy hack. Former Mariners and Twins minor leaguer. Strokes that one over the leap of Hussein Fair down the third baseline. Deeb's getting a stop sign from Ray Ortega at third. No need to do anything crazy when his run isn't the one that really matters. EJ on second base will be pinch run for by Malachi Mitchell. And now the innings tying run is in scoring position. And the man who led the Pioneer League last year with 29 bombs, Reese Alexiades, represents the inning winning run. The ninth extra base hit of the season for Eric Jones Jr. And there's nobody who's been more pull happy on tour when it comes to their hits than EJ. 67% of his hits have gone to left field this season. Delano misses in with the two seamer. Comes back with a four seam and evens up the count. Five pitch mix. The two aforementioned offerings, as well as a cutter, curveball, and changeup. Big swing and a miss there. That's the changeup rearing its nasty head. Delano trying to secure the inning for the animals. And he'll do it. Goes back to the changeup, gets the K, and the party animals win the fourth two runs to nothing. They jump out to a three points to one lead. Big punch out for Garrett Delano. And the batting with runners in scoring position woes continue for the Bananas, and especially Reese Alexiotis batting 188 this season when guys are at second or third base. Here is Emily Cole. Foster is celebrating Jennifer Hall. Jennifer became a licensed foster family after being a child protective services worker and seeing the dire need in the system. When she became a licensed foster family, she was a single mom and had this, done this by herself for seven years. She has welcomed 12 children into her home this way. Fans, please help us celebrate Jennifer for all that she is doing right here in this community for the foster care world. one of the coolest things that we get to celebrate in Banana Land. Tonight, the superhero at the center of it all, Jennifer Hall. It's been an action-packed four innings so far this evening. Party Animals have claimed three of the four points available. Banners did walk off the second, so they've got one on the board. And Jared Donaldson will be out for his second inning of relief. Looking at 9, 10, and 1 for the bad boys of Banana Land. And again, what did Jared Donaldson in in his first inning of relief tonight? Gave up a two-out double to Jake Skull. That is completely fine. But then with two outs, unable to bear down against Dalton Cornett and gave up the ball for Sprint, which of course led to Skull scoring that run for the Animals. And put the bat in the hands of Chase Acuff, who singled. 
And got the bat in the hands of Tanner Thomas, who singled. That pushed in another run. Turns out the party animals would only need one to do the deal as Delano stranded runners on second and third in the bottom half of the inning. And now, how about this? Split cruising in on his bike is going to pick up the Nanner center fielder, D.R. Meadows. And they are full steam ahead. Flying towards the mound. Looks like DR is going to pitch this. Jumping off the bike, throws the pitch. It is low. And Leroy able to keep it close to him, so Porter stays in the batter's box. Little motley crew there. Little kickstart my heart action. And uh, boy, what a... What a reckless move by Split. Looks like DR Meadows was just not ready to hop on that bike and then was like, oh, you know, what the heck. Donaldson uses the gas, dials it up, and blows it past Taj Porter. Strikeout number one for the pride of Albany, Georgia. As you get another couple looks at the K, and here's the man that over 10,000 folks here in the Bull City want to strike out more than any other. Jason Swan, the donut hitter. Ugly swing at the splitter there. He swords himself. Very chivalrous of him. And readies for the 1-1. He's not striking out. He's lining that one to right. Not many people in Banana Land use every part of the field better than Swanee. I mean, you could argue that he uses all parts of the field better than anybody else. Eight hits to left field, 10 hits to center field, 11 hits to right field. He hits best practically to the opposite field this season. He's such a good batter in that 10 spot for the party animals. It truly is a treat to get to, to watch the five-year man out of Georgia Southern each and every night. He wasn't in the lineup last night as he was still nursing a sore hamstring. He gets the half night off this evening, but not pinch run for. He gets to goof around on the bags himself as Hampton lays off the fastball up. Reese has got pop. 10 home runs last year in 11th when you count his homer and showdowns off Hosley in Brockton, the only one we've ever seen leave the park in showdowns in our young sports history. That one all the way to the backstop, just a bit high. And this is tricky for the Bananas. They need to get it to all seven fielders behind the pitcher and catcher before the ball is live. Swanee is still not running 100%, so he kind of hot dogs it to third for the betterment of his health. And the Animals we will be content with two runners in scoring position with one out. That's right. Swan's still dealing with a little bit of a muscle strain in his right leg, so not running at full speed there. And party Animals feel comfortable with the top of the order up and Bryson Bloomer with two home runs in this contest batting and trying to add more to their tally tonight. Donaldson struck him out on three pitches his last time. Both dingers were off of the Nanner starter Ryan Kellogg. Hampton just picked up his tour leading 19th sprint. That one's fair down the third baseline. Bloomer's thinking about extra bases. The throw goes into second. It's offline. Bryson's got himself a double. He has tied the banana ball record with 10 total bases, and we're not even through the top of the fifth inning. An extra base hit machine right now for the party animals. He has jump-started an unbelievably hot April for the animals with now two doubles and three home runs in his first five games this month. Wow! <laughs> he, came in, he came into this game as I'm getting a good chuckle, both from how insane that is and also the beat drop celebration that the party animals just pulled off. Bloomer came into this game with a homer, a triple, and a double. Three extra base hits. He's been up four times. He has three extra base hits tonight. He has tied his own record. He had 10 total bases in the only other game where a man has hit two home runs. Spoiler alert, it was Bryce, and that was April 26th of last year in Savannah. Jake Skull, the man at the dish, hit for the only cycle in Banana Ball history in that game, also got himself 10 total bases.
Jake two for three tonight. Two singles, two runs scored. And Bryson and Bloom are already with 12 runs batted in in the month of April as well. Unreal, I mean, he has a six RBI game in Savannah, Georgia, has five RBIs tonight, and has picked up another RBI in one of the other games this month. Right, we're four and a half games into April for everybody keeping track at home. 12 <laughs> runs driven in. Oh my gosh. He came into the ball game with 14 RBIs. He's up to 18 stakes now on the tour. Bloomer led last world tour with 56 runs driven in. One more than this man who finished second with 55. Payoff pitch to Skull. He takes the sprint. Donaldson having trouble getting the ball in the zone. And when he does, these party animals are making him pay. This is an offense that is clicking on all cylinders as Skull picks up his tour leading 28th run driven in. And Bloomer scores his third of the night. And what we're seeing more than anything out of Jared Donaldson, I think, tonight is, again, we talked about his struggles with control, but I think they come especially once he begins to pitch out of the stretch in contest. Really good when he's keeping guys off of bases, but as soon as a guy gets on, be a single, a double, whatever it may be, saw Donaldson in his first uh, batter that he's faced out of the stretch in back-to-back -back innings allow a ball for sprint. Yeah, that's an excellent note right there. His first batter out of the stretch tonight was this man, Dalton Cornett. After the school double with two outs an inning ago, DC3 worked an RBI sprint. He had two base hits off the Southpaw Kellogg before that, so he's working on a two for two night. Two runs scored, one driven in. This is a heck of a stats booster for the bad boys of Banana Land. And we will see them do this from time to time. And in fact, last Thursday in Savannah, they scored 19 runs. Check that, 15 runs on 19 hits. Cornette is punched out looking there. He would argue that one was inside. It's that Chapman disagrees. We get another look here. The one thing that I think us in the booth, everybody at home, and Dalton Cornett will all agree with as it was too close to take. Skoll scampering towards second. What a throw by Leroy. Jackson has trouble digging it out. I think even if he scooped it, Skoll was going to be in there safely on the wild pitch. Yeah, I mean, Bill kind of sensing that Jared Donaldson in a tough position right now threw that one off balance to second base, just seeing if he could try and get that final out at the bag. And it was a good play by Jackson Olsen because of Bill's off balance throw. It was a little wild and Olsen just getting the glove up all around him and keeping it right in front of him from going into the outfield. The problem here for Donaldson, and it's, it's very obvious, he doesn't have his fastball control. He just gave up another sprint here. Five pitches, four bad ones to Acuff. Skull will score easily for second as all seven bananas have to touch the ball before it's live behind the pitcher and catcher. So Acuff picks up his second stake of the night. He is two for three. And grabs the ball for a sprint to add on to it. Donaldson being a splitter specialist, he likes to throw that pitch about 50% of the time, but you need to have fastball control for it to be effective because the splitter looks like a heater coming in and then the bottom drops out of it, it disappears. But if you can't establish the fastball, then all of a sudden guys can hunt the splitter, the slider and the changeup, his secondary pitches. One, two to Tanner Thomas. Here comes the two, two. Good work. That's the splitter right there, and Tanner able to grab a piece of it. Yeah, and it feels like Jared Donaldson with the count at 2-2 is just going to continue to go to his signature pitch here and try and get the strike out of Tanner Thomas to get out of this frame. This one hit on a line. Jackson Olsen able to field this one with a nice pick and throw over to Ryan Cox covering the bag at second base. Jared Donaldson out of this inning 
in just under 10 minutes for the Bananas tonight. Good adjustment from Jackie on a tough hop. Thomas has been barreling balls all over the place. He's now two for four with his two runs driven in. And the Banana Band will blast away as we head to the bottom of the fifth inning. It ends up being a four-run four run frame for the boys in black and pink. So the Bananas will need four of their own to prevent the party animals earning their first, fourth point of the ball game. The animals with four in the fifth, two in the fourth, five in the third, one in the first. Nice night for the offense. Twelve runs scored already halfway through the game. And let's not forget that this team has scored 15 runs in multiple games this season. Scored 15 runs in game one in Gwinnett County this season and then followed it up doing it in Savannah a couple weekends ago. It's going to be 7-8-9 for the Nanners here in the bottom half of the fifth inning. Cutter for strike one to Gabe Howell. Delano trying to work quickly. The changeup misses down and in. Gabe, a 2019 and 2020 collegiate banana. Fantastic in both seasons. Banana's primary shortstop both times. He's been Banana's just about every night third baseman here in his first Banana Ball World Tour. Looking a good at bat here. He's got the count to two balls, two strikes. The 2-2 two -two to the pride of Somerville, Georgia, and he just gets a piece of it. Gave a guy who was signed by the Atlanta Braves. Check that, drafted by the Braves out of high school in the 20th round back in 2016. It's been a winding path ever since then. He flails and misses on a gnarly Delano curveball. They're out number one here in the bottom of the fifth. Yep, just a good mix of speeds by Garrett Delano. Had Gabe Howell fouling off what looks like a fastball or a cutter the previous pitch, and here it goes with the bender and is able to execute in a big way. Noah Bridges pops this one towards the fans. And they take the fact that this guy is a North Carolina product very seriously. Not a strong attempt on the foul ball. And a quick 0-2 count on the Nanners right fielder. Reached on a trick play miss by Skull deep in right his last time. And comes up empty on this one. Four strikeouts on the night for Delano. Another look at it there. And Delano's got his good stuff working. He's just about unhittable. But Jackson Olsen could hit prime Nolan Ryan right now. This guy's seeing beach balls. He's two for two. Again, we said it last night, but Jackson Olsen through the first 12 games of tour was batting 176. And since then, he is batting 450 for the Bananas. It is remarkable his approach at the plate and again, seeing beach balls. Ryan Cox is gonna make his way to home plate from the stands. This is one of the greatest songs ever created and we're blessed to have the Banana Band and C-Sax playing it for us live here in Durham right now as 
Coxie comes up to the plate. It's impossible not to move when this thing's going. Josh <laughs> muted his mic and is shaking his body in an honestly inspiring and also terrifying manner. A lot of hips, a lot of jerking. The facial expression <laughs> is really something. Oh, boy. Good work, Mr. Tolemski. Good work, Garrett Delano. Acuff takes control out in left center. Thomas was there to grab him in case he stumbled. No need. Two strikeouts, a two-out single, but then the pop-out. And the party animals have claimed three straight points. They lead by that many. And for the most part, Garrett Delano's had his good stuff working tonight overall and has got to love the run support that he's gotten in the meantime. I feel like the more we see these party animals get the run support, just the more fun they have out there on the mound and the better they pitch overall. And Eagle, I'm not sure if I'm proud of this, but Dan's got me just a little bit windy. <laughs> Is that concerning? Should I should I be worried about that? We should both start running, is the thing, because as much as I think my body is a temple, so we honor all the service members, both past and present, here in DBAP, and we pass that on to everybody watching on YouTube as well. Uh, on the inside, aerobically, I am so far away from the peak of my powers, it is terrifying. Terrifying. If I just moved it and grooved it like you did, I mean, I would be heaving right now. No kidding. Yeah. My goodness. I don't want to get the oxygen machine in here. And this is a guy who plans to run a marathon in Philadelphia in November. Christian Deerman, the new man on the mound. I've got plenty of time to train, folks. Don't worry. Mr. Electric, the second man out of the pen, third guy to pitch for the Nanners. He's a veteran of this thing. Third world tour, sixth season as a banana after three of them being collegiately. And making his fourth appearance on this year's world tour. He has actually earned a win this season for the Bananas in his season debut in Jacksonville, Florida. And for Christian Deerman, the track record will tell you that he throws quickly out there on the mound. He has six career innings that he has thrown in less than two minutes in his banana ball career. And he's working very quickly again this season. You see the MPI on the screen. Two minutes and 49 seconds, the average time it takes him to record three outs. And really, the control is key for Mr. Electric. He's walking 25% of the batters he's faced this season. So I know he knows that he's got to cut down on that in order to continue the success that he's had early on this season. First pitch of his evening, certainly not located where he wanted it. Second pitch was superb, though. You see the movement on his stuff. He's very similar to Drew Gillespie for the party animals. Gillespie has a little more velo than Deerman does, but they are funky righties. They'll use a variety of arm slots, and none of their pitches are straight. This one jams Hussein, and Howell tries to go behind his back. Looks like that one had some English in midair. Lands on Howell's derriere, and Hussein aboard on the trick play miss. Yeah, it was a nice attempt by Gabe Howell, and you're willing to try those with no outs and nobody on. So, so far, no harm, no foul for Gabe Howell, but he's been so good defensively for the Bananas lately. It's actually his first trick play miss since March 14th for the Bananas. Yeah, he's now 7 for 12 on the tour in those opportunities. Let's amend that landing zone from the keister to the thigh. Thank you so much, our fine folks in the control room in Grayson Stadium, giving us an excellent replay to let us know where that ball touched down. Hussein's got excellent wheels. Well, he was rehabbing earlier this year from the broken fourth and fifth metacarpal. It was the party animal's everyday designated runner. Are you kidding me, Ryan Cox? That would have been one of the greatest trick plays in banana ball history if Dustin Baber wasn't so quick. Yeah, and I think regardless of whether Ryan Cox goes between the legs or not, you're making that exact same throw across the diamond in about the same amount of time. 
probably wouldn't have been able to nail Dustin Baber either way. So just a great try overall from Ryan Cox, just kind of getting some more reps there at the shortstop position. No, you definitely cannot assume that that should have been an out as Dearman checks on Hussein, Cox covering. Jordan back standing safely. So Baber gets his third hit of the night. And that was unbelievable stuff though, just showing that Coxie can do that is pretty mind melting. And again, it shows you the range that he has at the shortstop position. Not just a good glove trickster, but a good shortstop overall. Big first out here in the top of the sixth for Mr. Electric. It's the party animals catcher to pop it out to his. Roy Dearman's battery mate comes away with it. And now Jason Swan will swing it with two on and one away. The donut hitter with a line out and fly out to right. A line drive base hit the opposite way his last time. That one chopped, knocked down by Vava, Cody Animals head coach. Couple Florida guys dueling. Dearman out of Pembroke Pines. Swanee from Jacksonville. He flies it to Bridges, who has gotten the ball all four times. Jason Swan has come to the dish. And now with two down, it'll be Reese Hampton. Yeah, just a lot of action for Noah Bridges when Jason Swan's come up to the plate. I'm sure he'll be more than ready if Jason Swan bats again in this ball game as we get later into this thing. Noah has had four putouts tonight, three of them against Swan. Hampton's fifth plate appearance of the ball game. Party Animals are tearing through their 10-man lineup awful efficiently. Three and one. One more ball from Christian Dearman will score Hussein from second. There it is. Just misses high. Dearman apoplectic about the call. Hussein scores from second. As I prophesized, that's an unearned run on Dearman, so he still has not given up an earned run this year. Jordan reached on the trick play missed by Howell. And then Baber over to third. Hampton with his second sprint of the night. His tour leading 20th overall. And he has now reached the 20 RBI plateau. Not much more we could ever say when we're waxing poetic about the former Tigers and Diamondbacks minor leaguer. I mean, he is just incredible. As Bloomer, a 2021 CPO Bananas teammate with Dearman, has himself a 3-0 count. And four straight bad ones. Another unearned run is across. And the bloodbath continues for the Bananas at the hands of the party animals. Second run of the inning. 14th of the night as Bloomers toying with history. He has his fifth RBI, one away from the banana ball record that he set last Thursday. I have six RBIs for Bryson Bloomer tonight. Huh? Wow. Two run home run, two run double? Correct. One run sprint? Yes. Isn't that five? Home run in the first. I didn't give him an RBI for the home run. I was run. like, what are we, what's going on here? Yep. Bryson Bloomer has tied his own record. Thank you. Mr. The first two six RBI games in banana ball history belong <laughs> to number eight for the party animals. Thank you, Mr. Tolevsky, for holding me accountable. I mean, I was looking at you like you had two heads. Uh, K-Club YouTube comment section, feel free to roast Bika once again. My math is... The opportunity has presented itself. It's normally quite strong, although I haven't taken a class in it since my senior year of high school. Dearman gets skull looking. Strands, runners on the corners. But the party animals continue to push the envelope. 
the windmill has been turning at a pretty prolific pace for Mike Vivasis over in the third base coach's box. And now Jake Lealios has two runs to work with as we welcome him into the broadcast. Jake, how's your evening going? Nico, you hear me? Oh, we've got you loud and clear. Oh my gosh, it was a struggle. We, we got you all, all wired up and everything okay? Oh yeah. Okay, terrific. Loud and proud. This has been a fun one for you guys, huh? Yeah, it has been. I'll be honest, I'm a little, I'm a little shook that uh, you guys are already live. Hot mic during the warm-up pitches. I'll say some four-letter words about uh, the first couple, but hey, we're yeah. feeling good. Well, Baber and Chase are <laughs> procrastinating on the 62 as per usual. Yeah, they're, they're getting a little practice in right, right at the 11th hour. Watch, then I'll be the one that messes it up. Oh, Taj. Taj Mahal. Cartwheel tossed down to second, off camera. Yeah. I mean, there's a there's a price to trick to trick plays in foolery. All right, Jake, All you've right, got man. the top of the order, and Rack is pinch hitting for Meadows here. Odd choice, because uh, <laughs> Meadows is good. <laughs> oh, that's uh, Rack's awful. great too. I mean, he's a former no, Washington Nationals I mean, minor leaguer. But I get what you're saying. Course. Meadows yeah. is leading the tour in batting average. You guys are so distracting, I swear. Yeah, I'm sorry. I'm not usually we, like this. We love talking right when you're <laughs> mid mid stretch. Whoa! Uh, I'll see you, Bat. Bryce and Bloomer. <laughs> Thank you. Hey, hey, before we have not really gotten to talk about anything yet. That's yeah. my bad. No, that's um, okay. But quick disclaimer as we do the stroke. Um to be stern with you guys. Yes. About this upcoming at bat. I don't mean to be this guy, but second pitch, second batter of the inning, there will be a little ditty that we do. Yes. And I need you to just be quiet for that one because <laughs> it's really hard to hear the music already. <laughs> Nothing personal. Oh, God, he's... Okay. All right, here it comes. We're being All right, quiet. Pipe down. Here goes nothing. Here we go, Shark. Come on, Shark. Come on, Shark. No, that's all right. That's a ball. Chapman says a pinch outside. But that is a toughie. There's a lot going on in that dance. Gracious. I'll tell you what, you killed the boogie, Jake. Oh, yeah. God, he's so... That's bad. That's okay. You've got two runs to work with. Yeah, hold him at first. And good sprint defense that's, uh, from the boys. That's big time. Still one. How are you going to attack Dan Oberst? I'm really hoping he's just going to roll something over. I get lucky. Shoot him. Yeah. Oh. Good, good slide, actually. Yeah, it was a great slide by Flash. He's now 18 for 19 in his stolen base attempts. Yeah. Ball home, still the only man to nab him. I mean, strikes are fun, too, I guess. We love strikes. <laughs> good. Try to get under the hands, I guess. <laughs> that looked like it ended up pretty middle-middle. <laughs> yeah. But, but it did the job. Beggars can't be choosers. He's trying to spin that thing, I guess. 0-2. Oh, oh, that's so bad. What was that pitch? A pretty brutal changeup. That's what I thought it was. <laughs> I don't know. It's just like not feeling it right now. 
Oh, that's a heck of a scoop by Taj. Okay, so the feel for the changeup is at 100%. It might be, honestly. I just gotta keep throwing it. Like, I give up on it too easy sometimes. It's the only way you're gonna find it. Punchy. Oh. Ooh, ooh, zip up the jacket. Yeah. <laughs> I don't have a lot of good sellies, dude. Surprising, because you're one of the best dancers in Banana Land. I'm better at, like, just the, I guess the improv sort of show chip sort of deal. Yes. I don't know. This is cute. This is funny. Looks like you're going to be pitching to a little girl here, Jake. Hey, don't say that about Michael Deeb. <laughs> <laughs> He's a beefcake. He is one big tiger. And he has part of gold. All one of, of my favorite men in the land, honestly. I continue to retweet. And way more rhythm, way more musical talent, or at least like, than a lot of people would guess, honestly. So everyone thinks he's just a meathead, but that boy's got it all. He's got the soul of the music in his body. Yeah. It's a big body. It's one of those things you know it when you see it, and boy, oh boy. I'm loving what I'm seeing from you now, Jay. Really? Yeah! Oh, I appreciate that. Okay, Flash. <laughs> yeah! Catch it, why not? Pound the zone? <laughs> You're... No, dude, my... This, uh, I'm going one piece with the mic right now. <laughs> yeah. And, uh... Good manga. My, uh... <laughs> yeah. <laughs> my... I feel like my equilibrium is all over the place right now. <laughs> we got you goofed up. Oh! Yeah, yeah. Yeah, that's an inning win. And I'll give him a Vincent Chapman, why not? Oh, yeah! <laughs> I, yeah. Just, I just struck out the oh, three and four hitters. Gotta go, dude. I Leo gotta go. Leos, thank you, buddy! <laughs> Love, Love you, you man. There goes Lealios. Another look at the replay. It's the world fastest inning, so the seventh begins just seconds after the sixth ended. Zach Phillips, the new man on the mound. We have entered our Zappos giveaway time, so our buzzword tonight is Nuke. Obviously, Bull Durham inspired by Nuke Lelouch. How about the trick play for Brian Cox? Wow! Looked like he was performing some kind of unique, impromptu wrestling move on the grass in shallow outfield. The key to securing the trick play is getting his behind on the grass before he catches the ball, which he nailed. And then he started flopping around like a fish to make sure that he could reach the ball and also for our viewing pleasure. He's a man of the people, as is Chase Acuff, who gives them an opportunity to catch a foul ball here, and they come up empty. Still an 0-2 count on the animal shortstop. Phillips is the owner of the fastest inning in banana ball history. Took him 55 seconds to get through the top of the seventh in Houston. How about Ryan Cox? Come on now! That man is unbelievable. There's the range once again from Ryan Cox going behind the second base bag, fielding this one, giving the 360 spin over to Eric Jones Jr. at first base and beating the speed of Chase Acuff. One of the best plays we'll see this weekend. Slap a star on it in your scorebook at home. 1-1 one, one count on Tanner Thomas. Two base knocks. Picked up a ribeye on each of them. Two for four tonight. And smacks that one on a line. Over the leap of Noah Bridges. Ends up tipping off of his glove. And Tanner was goofing around. I'm not sure what he was doing on his way to first. Definitely could have had a double, but he'll be content with his second single of the night instead. I honestly think Tanner Thomas might have thought that Noah Bridges came down with the catch there. Now, Noah didn't really try and fake Tanner Thomas out like he had, but for Tanner just opting to be, uh, be cool with the single there. Just be cool, bro. Be cool. That is back-to-back -back three hit nights for Tanner, who had none of them coming into Durham. 
Once again, baseball, banana ball, brilliant sports for an infinite amount of reasons. The unpredictability being chief among them as Hussein continues to hang tough at the dish. Hasn't been invited to the hit party yet and still waiting on the invitation. He strikes out, Phillips does his job with some special help from his shortstop. Picks up the K of Jordan. And just like that, we are in the bottom of the seventh inning. Zach Blankenship waiting for his defenders to get to their positions. Hussein will be the last man. No time to grab a hat, but he does get his glove. And all seven party animals now officially out behind Bam and Porter. Blankenship, the pride of Fleming Island, Florida, just like his left fielder, the aforementioned Mr. Tanner Thomas. Two of them. Fast friends since their youth grew up playing ball together in the Jacksonville area as Baber scoops this one, bounces it to first. Bloomer there to reel it in. And Babes continues to shine. 39th trick play of the year. Yeah, Dustin Baber with a really good play. Didn't have time to go between the legs or try any other trickery. Instead, as he's making the throw, feels it out and goes, I can bounce this one over to Bryson Bloomer and collects that trick play. Good feel from Baber. Now the baton pass to Reese Alexiotis, who's giving the fans a good amount of foul ball catching opportunities. They keep coming up empty. 0-2 count now. Reese able to get a piece of it. Hot shot into left center for a base knock. Reese will take a healthy round of first, but stay right there. It's just different the way the ball comes off his bat. It is mystifying to see on a nightly basis. Yeah, I mean, we know that the exit velocities off of Reese, Ham or Reese Alexiotis' hits have been phenomenal all season long. Now just hoping he can start to hit again for more extra bases and hopefully start to leave the yard a little more for the Bananas as well. Again, 29 home runs last year in the Pioneer League. Check swing from Gabe Howell. He went around, so it's going to be a three-pitch strikeout. Uh, A guy who had 17 home runs in the Pioneer League last year. I'll hit 299 across that time. Unbelievable year for the Glacier Range Riders. But Blankenship makes short work of him. Zach was in the Frontier League for the Gateway Grizzlies last year before joining the Party Animals towards the last couple months of the tour. Good hold up there by Noah Bridges to push the count to two and two. Doesn't bite on the curveball. Blankenship also throws a splitter, a changeup, and then his money pitch is two seam sinkers. It is a heavy ball, and that's what he uses to get the K of Bridges here. He will roll himself all the way off the field. He holds serve. And for the first time tonight, neither team claims a point. Another look at Cox with the trick play to begin the inning and then just the phenomenal defensive play to grab his counterpart, Mr. Reka. Baber grabs a trick play himself and will get it down to the blindfolded pillow fight. Two, three, four, five, fight, gentlemen, fight! Here they go, swinging hard, swinging very hard. There's, there's impact in the middle. It's Ty and Tyler with a showdown, swinging with everything they got. Nate is swinging at absolutely nothing. <laughs> this is a brutal melee. His mask came off. He's taking himself out. We've got five seconds left. We've got three five, fighters left. He lost four, his pillow. Three, defenseless. two, one, Stop time. the fight. Stop the fight. How do we think our winner was contestant number one? 
Contestant number two. Contestant number three. Or contestant number four. He did absolutely nothing, but here is your winner, contestant number four. Now batting number nine. A thrilling blindfolded pillow fight, as it always is. And we, we welcome Jackson Olsen into the broadcast. I had a mystery man on the mic screaming for a ball from Rack. I, I knew it wasn't you because I was looking at you and your lips weren't moving. That was, <laughs> that was mind boggling for me. I think that's a preview for a segment we're going to have a little later on. It's Mike Two. Oh, the world's Mike fastest two. inning. Mike Two, Mike Two. Our minds. How, how is it for a player? Um, honestly, I kind of like it because it gets you out of the funk of like whether someone had a bad last at bat or whatever. Like you kind of have to flush everything, so it's like almost like a brand new game. You're like, all right, Philly's on the mound. He's gonna pump the strike zone, and yeah, I love it. He drops down, fires that one outside. Count now full on Dustin Baber. Bottom three in the party animals order. Porter and Swan due to swing it after Babes. And how about Dustin Baber? That is his fourth hit of the ball game. That's his fourth hit? That's his fourth hit, Jackson. Oh my gosh, go Baber. Now, go, hey, if, go, go second baseman of an animal. Yeah, if Let's you go. were getting the opportunities, you would probably be at four <laughs> hits right now. Between the two of you, you guys are six for seven tonight. Let's go. And Baber's the man who's made the only said five, He's had five at-bats? Correct. I usually average like two. Correct. Oh, fan catch! Jackson, you are eyes on that one. We can't see diddly-ding down the right field line. Didn't see it, but I saw the scream. Yep, that's and how I saw you... Porter throw his bat, and now helmet. No, he, he held on to it. <laughs> Good restraint there for Taj. <laughs> yeah, you... Whether you see the catch, you can always know when it happens based on the reaction. <laughs> oh, yeah. What about nope. Jason Swan? He's two for five now. Base hit to left field there. He lined his first hit to right. You, you guys know who I really don't like? Who's that? That new kid, Balholm, on the Party Animals. Oh, my gosh. Can't stand him. I heard he likes ranch over blue cheese. <laughs> <laughs> That's egregious. That is that is. Wait, you like blue cheese? Yeah. No, ranch. I'm oh, okay, okay. Wait, Jackson, where do you align on the issue? Oh, ranch, all that. I knew you would. You're such a ranch guy. A real big ranch guy. <laughs> you know who else is a ranch girl? Taylor Swift. Okay, fair enough. I'm a diehard blue cheeser. Oh, As no. am I. Yeah. Oh, There's no. a reason we're the perfect combo up in the booth. They have some good blue cheese in uh, New York, Pico. Oh, man. Don't get me started on the New York blue cheese, Jackie. Pico, what, what's your, not that this literally has anything to do with what we're doing right That's now, okay. what is your favorite New York uh, delicacy? Probably a chopped cheese. Okay. Just bodega classic. Have you had the Yankee Stadium chopped cheese? Yes, I have. It's scrumptious. Unbelievable. I'm a big fan. Big fan. Uh, Jackson, this has been an ongoing debate in the BTV, YouTube, and K-Club chats for a while now. How do you feel about ranch on a hot dog? Oh, God. I've never tried it, so I can't knock it. But at first glance and at first, uh, yeah, no. Yeah. And, oh, and, oh, wow. Oh, God. Peter outside corner. Vince was excited to call that one. Hampton is punched out. And that will bring Bryson Bloomer up to the plate. Steal third, Bronny. Bloomer currently tied for the banana ball record with six runs driven in today. Oh my gosh. It's the record he set last Thursday night. Jackson, we're going to be spinning the wheel oh, gosh. of hitter, the wheel of batter, the wheel of one of those two. Wheel of batter. The, yeah. the, both, both of those were the wheel really of tough batting to Batting outcomes. Correct. Yes. There it is. The wheel of batting outcomes. Wheel of batting outcomes. As Phillips grabs his second K of the inning, third of the night. Uh, how are you feeling about this upcoming at bat? I'm kind of nervous. I don't want to bunt, actually. You yeah. know what? At this point in the game, if I bunt and get ejected, it would be pretty good for the uh, crowd. So. Correct. And we've decided we'll give you a sack bunt in the books because you're sacrificing yourself 
for, okay. the, for the good of content. Okay, perfect. Yeah, so it won't hurt your batting average. That is that is very good to know. Which continues to soar. Let's go. Came in at 318. You're two for two with a double and a single. Let's go. You know, a lot of keeping up with the Joneses, too, with Hampton and Skull, who you entered the game, all three of you tied with nine doubles apiece. Now you're all tied with ten doubles no each. No way. Let's yeah. go. <laughs> A little two-bagger party with the boys. Two-bagger party. Let's uh, let's get the daddy hack at card, and then I'll make it 11. Okay, terrific. We'll, we've got it on there once. We oh. have two Jackson choices. Wow. Okay, so, guys, wait. PTSD right now. Look yeah. who's on the mound. What state are we in? North Carolina. Who hit oh, me in no. the face? Uh-oh. Jackson, would you like to... <laughs> To tell our audience the tale of, of what happened in Kannapolis. Oh, the tale. Um, go back into second base and got absolutely drilled. Um, should have had a flap in my helmet, which now I do. Luckily, have a flap. Uh, and yeah, got hit. Bled in the, uh, this is way TMI, but <laughs> bled in the emergency room for about six hours. Came, uh, went, to the, went to the emergency room at like 8 p.m., got out at 4 a.m. Shout out to Marie because she and her husband were there the entire time. That's pretty impressive. And it's been documented incredibly on your TikTok and Instagram. So if anybody wants video evidence, plus the legendary TikTok you made in the hospital, uh, that's there. Okay, we're spinning the wheel right now, Here we now, go, spin Jackson. the wheel, spin the wheel. Swing, I'll take! Take? You gotta take, uh, your pitch. first pitch take, Jackson. All right, yeah, I know he's gonna come here. Mm, okay. Yeah, it was on swing for a second and then spun to take. So we're yeah. going to see one here. Yep, I knew it. I knew it. <laughs> okay, your next one is Daddy Hack. Let's go. Oh, I did it for you guys, though. That was yeah. for you. Okay, for now you. it's Jackson's choice. You get the swing, take, do whatever you okay. want in this situation. Okay. Good timing for that. Take. Okay, if you guys you... told me to swing right there, I would have freaked out. <laughs> you, you are swing here. Right, here the wheel go. says swing. <laughs> oh, no. Guys. <laughs> that was a... I can't hear anything. Oh, so you I tipped know. it. You tipped it. I can't hear, so. Foul balls is missing, Chapman. I can't hear anything, so that's... <laughs> That's huge. Uh, your next one will be another daddy hat. Okay. <laughs> That's just what you need one too. Ah! I Boy, feel like Porter knew that was you had a daddy hat. He definitely knew. He that knew. was disgusting. <laughs> uh, Jackson Olson, thank you so much for playing spin the wheel of batter outcomes. Yep, you're welcome. You got it. <laughs> Love you, Jackie. Have fun, Jackson. The wheels have not been kind to Kyle Lewis or Jackson Olsen either of the last two nights. Dude, I have a feeling this thing is not going to make it back home to Savannah, Georgia after this weekend. Pistol squat from Dylan Porter and a foul ball straight back from Alex Ziegler. Pinch hitting here for the Niners shortstop. And he gets three pitches, three strikes. Gnarly two seam there from Porter. And to the top of the order we go, Robert Anthony Cruz has been inserted into the game for DR Meadows. So he gets his second plate appearance. He bounced to second base back in the sixth. Rapp, of course, took over for the Bananas center fielder. He's been playing left, though. Alexiadis moved from left to center. Dylan Porter pounding the zone. That one came in at 91, according to Trackman. This one bounced to Baber again. Behind the back with the glove to glove. Dazzling trick play for number 40 on the year for Derek Ginger. No better way to get to number 40 this season for Dustin Baber. Going with a little bit of some razzle-dazzle, kind of behind the back, and then bouncing it. 
for firing it over to first and a really clean inning for Dylan Porter getting out of it in two minutes and 40 seconds. The ring dudes are out and about as we enter our final inning with about six minutes remaining on the two out for a timer. That one no longer matters. We will play the ninth. And if this thing ends up tied afterwards, we'll head to tiebreaker showdowns. It's a Chapman and company loving the final inning music. It's an absolute banger. So is Jake Lealios, who's getting after it on top of his dugout. Austin Krasminski, the new man on the mound for the Bananas. Former minor leaguer in the Los Angeles Angels and Chicago Cubs systems. Before that, a 2017 Collegiate Banana. And just continues to get stronger in his banana ball career. This is appearance number 11 for Austin Krasminski. And across his last six outings, he has a 1.50 ERA. He's averaging four minutes and 47 seconds per inning, but he's striking out 19% of batters in the meanwhile. And he's kind of in a fly ball machine this season. 17 flyouts compared to just five ground outs that he's induced. Really fun battle here. Krasminski with five years of minor league baseball time. Skoll with seven. For all my fans at home, it's a dozen between the two. Three, four, and five. Meaty part of this Party Animals lineup for Krem is EJ under the leg for Krasminski covering the bag. Trick play number 10 on the tour for Jones Jr. Eric Jones Jr. reaches double digits this season for the Bananas. And by the way, he is still perfect in all of his trick play attempts this season. 10 for 10 and a nice first out battle. Krasminski keeps it simple when it comes to the arsenal. Four seam fastball, circle changeup, as well as a slider. Is this one a mile high and not caught by any fans? Understandably so. That thing went to the moon and back. Cornette having himself a fine evening. Two for four, couple base knocks. An RBI sprint, two runs scored. Drills that one out to left center, but Cruz has a beat on it, called off by Alexi Otis. And a quick two outs for the Cruz Monster. Yeah, one minute and eight seconds into this inning now, and Austin Krasminski with two quick outs. He's gonna try and get after Chase Aka very quickly, and this is what is really enjoyable to see from Austin Krasminski more than anything, a sign that he's growing in banana ball. He continues to nail first pitch strikes against these party animals batters. Started all three guys 0-1 so far. Trackman had that fastball at 93 miles an hour. This heater comes in at 94. Krasminski, one of the hardest throwers we have in Banana Land. Right up there with Ethan Skujay. Usually sits about 92 to 94. He can touch 96 when he's feeling feisty. Elevates the heater there. And a one two count on Aka, who is two for four himself. A couple runs driven in, one scored. Nobody's been better in the ninth inning than Acuff, and we keep talking about it because he keeps coming up in these situations. Dinks that one towards center. Alexiotis on a full sprint grabs it. One, two, three for Kris Krasminski. Here's the young crowd. score once again is five points to one but every run that the bananas are able to score here counts in their favor four runs to tie it and send it to showdowns five runs to win the whole thing durham north carolina are you ready then here we go ladies and gentlemen this is it as 
we head station. to the bottom of the ninth inning, we welcome in the pride of Newhall, California, Sexy Mexi, Ryan Rodriguez. What's up, fellas? How we doing? Oh, uh, we're terrific. Even better that you've joined us now. What is the plan of attack as you come in for two, three, and four in this bananas lineup? Uh, I'm gonna throw hard. I love and it. And then uh, they're gonna get out. Keep it simple. Oh. That's the kind of brain that gets you full rides to a plethora of med schools. Now, Ryan, the note that we continue to share with the broadcast viewers throughout the season oh. is the intensity that you pitch with out on the mound. Take us into your headspace right now as you're trying to nail down this win for the animals. There's voices in my head. <laughs> What are they saying, Ryan? What are they saying? You don't want to know. <laughs> oh, Ryan, you can tell me. Trust me. That's what they always say. Yeah. Come on, Bill. That the sounds box. good. Let's go. Come on. Leroy will Let's listen. Go. Mexi's fired up. That's okay, a show and pitch. Ah, come on. Backside, backside, backside. Jump it forward. Yes. Nice cutter there. Yeah. Steady diet for Leroy. Yeah. Uh-huh. All, all day. All night, all day, buddy. That's all day. Vicky does this Let's find out. Oh, he did. He did. <laughs> That's a great take. Good looking bender. Time to go at him. Good work, Sexy. Oh, yeah. All right, one down, two to go. Here comes Dan Oberst. Here we go. Cutter City? Um, no. Slider. Oh. Sit on that. That was a beaut. Get me over, baby. Oh. Yeah. yeah. Yep. There she blows. Uh-huh. O2, what's the play? Oh, baby. Do it, Jordan. Oh. Tough scoop there for Bloomer. He's going to get to second on the E5. Drats. Yeah, that's one of those in-betweeners there for your first baseman. You'd rather it be bounced a lot oh, wow, farther or a lot so closer. Better. All right. Can you hear me breathing? Oh, yeah, we got you. <laughs> Brian, would you like to bless us with any more ASMR while you're at it? <laughs> I think that's going to be a It's supposed to be a batter, isn't it? Yeah, eventually. Here comes Michael Deep. All right, dude. Let's go. Yep. That's strike. Yeah. I don't know if I've ever seen anybody turn so far their took us away from home plate. That's another strike. Oh, Vitsy. That's out. That's out. It's close, though. It was close. Good frame by Taj. Ah, I slipped. That's my bad. It happens to the best. Come on. 2 1, we go right at him. Pinch low. I'm laying off that ball. Yeah. Now he does. Pay off. Let's do it again. Oh. That is a great 3 2 offering. Come on. Right back to the well. Oh. 
Oh. Yeah. Go down. Good battle here between you and Michael Vitamin D. catch there. It's going to be an unearned run that scores. It's the ninth inning, so every run scored counts as a point. It is now 5-2 party animals. Deep scampers to second as the sprint defense wasn't too clean behind you. All right. No more games. Let's go. That's a fact, because we don't want the game's tying run to come aboard. Yeah. Another excellent pitch. That one deep out to left center. Yes, baby, yeah. Holy crap. Plenty of room for Reese Hampton. Oh my gosh. And you were never worried, Ryan. No, no, not at all. <laughs> oh, that was really scary. It's the crowd. It's the crowd that's. Yeah. Wow. Home state kid. Hit it a mile high. Completely missed my spot. That was supposed to be an outside fastball. Hey, you got the out. That's the important part. Now Reese Alexianis. Okay. Okay. Here we go. Two zero. Reset. Back to the heat. Reset. Yes. All day. And Come all on, night man. for that matter. Come on. Ugh. Yeah. On the hands. I got it. I got it. I got it. I got it. You're one strike away, sexy. Let's do it. Slider. Thought I had it. Really thought I had it. Back to the heat. Ugh. You betcha. Do it. Hussein. Come on, Jordan. From his butt. Bloomer can't grab it on the bounce. And the bananas still breathe. Okay. We're still winning. Right? Still up by two points. Up by two, okay. Yeah. What a cushion. What a cushion. <laughs> oh, one to Gabe Howell. <laughs> Get that guy off your plate. <laughs> Don't want to hit him again. <laughs> <laughs> I hear you there. Fudge. Hampton going to fire this in. Alexiades gets a stop sign at third. I got it, 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 I got it. And you still have a two-point lead. Come on, man. You now deal with Noah Bridges. <laughs> oh, he got plunked. I didn't even know that. Yeah, I had well, it all comes down to you, Ryan Rodriguez, and Jackson Olsen. This is what Banana Ball is all about. Let's go. Come on. Way to jump ahead. Now we hope Taj is okay. I think. You good? I think I got him on his right arm.
Pro move by Vincent Chapman to give Porter some time. You're ahead 0-1. Come on. Come on. Let's do it. Yeah. Come on. You're ahead 0-2. Ball and two strikes to the Bananas' second baseman. Deuces are wild. This is the pitch to do it on, Ryan. Yeah, yes, come on! Oh, 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 oh. Hey, the fuck Come on. Get in, baby. Woo. Thank you so much, Ryan Rodriguez. There he goes as the boys come flying in with colorful language galore. That's the risk we take when we mic up the sexy Mexi. He was not the man with the colorful language at the end. That fellow will be unnamed. Well, you can see it right there. <laughs> it was pretty obvious who it was. The party animals take the first two games here in Durham. They win the season battle between them and the Bananas. And we'll go for the sweep tomorrow. 1 p.m. first pitch, 12.30 p.m. Eastern. The pregame show will kick off. Here is Mike Vivasis. Pitcher Garrett Delano and catcher Taj Porter. Our bullpen of Drew Gillespie, Garrett DeClue, Jake Lealios, Dalton Ponce, Zach Blankenship, Ryan Rodriguez, Butter Higgins, Dylan Porter, Shawnee Fluke, and Brett Hilton. Our infield of Chase Acuff, Justin Baber, Jordan Hussein, Noah Fisher, Jason Swan and Bryson B -B 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 Luba. Our reserve catchers tonight of Dalton Cornett and Bronson Balholm. That studly outfield of Jake Skoll, Reese Hampton, and Tanner, Chicken Tender, Thomas. And for that coaching staff, pitching coach Isaac Hess, hitting coach Anthony Cromato, and myself, head coach, Mike Baba Vavasis. Let's go! A mighty impressive win for the bad boys of Banana Land. They take it five points to three. And used an offensive onslaught to get themselves two straight victories here in Durham. They have fought for their right to party in back-to-back -back evenings here in Durham Bowls Athletic Park. They're the ones shooting confetti at the end of all the action. Welcome up inside the broadcast booth with Josh Tolevsky. I'm Biko Scala. Thank you all so much for spending your Saturday night with us here in virtual Banana Land. Josh, last night it was the pitching. Helton and Gillespie held the Nanners to just one run across their eight credited innings between the two. Tonight it was the party animals hitting. They score 14 runs on 19 hits and earn five ball four sprints. I mean, that was an unbelievable performance. Yeah, they got 10 hits through the first three innings off of Ryan Kellogg, and that all seemed really good. And then when Jared Donald and Christian Deerman came into the pitch, the party animals took advantage of their glaring weaknesses, sometimes their ability to find the zone, and they issued five sprints between each other. Party animals, of course, tacked on more runs. And once again, we've seen this team three games now this season where they've scored 14 or more runs 
unbelievable. And most of the time, they have been led by Bryson Bloomer at the plate, his second six RBI game of the tour this year. And of course, tying the banana ball record for another multi home run game, his second in his career. And of course, tying the record for most total bases in one game with 10. There have been two six RBI games ever in the 139 banana ball games we have had in this young sports history. There have been two two home run games. They both belong to the boomer. And there have been three 10 total base games. Two of those are Bryson. Jake Skull finally sneaks in there and gets to share some of the glory. Uh, as an avid lover of barrels, when the bad, bad boys, boys go, go off, off like, like that, that and they are smoking balls all over and out of the park, it is thrilling to watch. I mean, they as a lineup, one through ten, it seems like when the guys up top, up top catch fire or if the guys on the bottom get real hot, they just feed each other. You saw the party animals bat around in the third. All ten guys got to swing it. It's just unbelievable to watch when they're all swinging it like that. Well, let's not forget, for a team to be able to score this many runs in a ball game, it takes every part of your order hitting well. And Dustin Baber in the eighth spot tonight had four hits for the party animals. Jason Swan returns after a two-game absence. He collects two hits for the party animals in the 10 spot. We truly saw the bottom half of this party animals order feed the top. Bryson Bloomer doesn't get six runs bad in this ball game without those events happening. So a really good all-around offensive performance from the party animals. Yeah, I mean, just to dig a tiny bit deeper, Hampton at the top, one one hit, two ball, four sprints. Bloomer in the tool. We have waxed poetic about him. Three hits, two of them home runs, six RBIs. He added a sprint as well. Skull in the three hole with two hits, one of them a double. He scores three runs. He added a sprint as well. Cornette in the four hole, two hits, a sprint, a run driven in, a couple runs scored. Acuff in the five hole, two hits, a sprint, two runs driven in. Thomas in the six hole, three hits, two runs driven in. Unfortunately, Jordan Hussein and Taj Porter, the only two guys in the order who did not get invited to the hit parade, but the eight guys who did get invited, uh, all of them had two hits except for Reese Hampton at the top of the order, and he had two sprints. And look, I, I think one more thing that needs to be touched on in this ball game is it really does feel like, once again, it's another dominating party animals win, but this game still came down to the final inning. Very you true. saw the party animals. Yes. They were up five points to one, but then in the bottom half, Bananas start to rally against Ryan Rodriguez. They scratch two runs against him. All of a sudden, it's a five points to three ball game, and then the Bananas have the bags full, and Jackson Olsen has an opportunity to win the game for them, even though the party animals were so dominant offensively tonight. The Bananas, despite their struggles, still had the opportunity to claim a win and try and even that series tonight. Yes, there's a lot more story building and, and tension building and setting the scene that we would have been doing if we didn't have the guy on the mound with the game possibly collapsing underneath his feet on the mic with us. Uh, we had the game winning run on first base there when it all came down to it and Jackson Olsen who as we mentioned earlier is seeing beach balls. He was two for three tonight with an RBI double a single. The only time he had made it out before that was when he helped us out with some fun little a fun little goofy game called uh, the the uh, wheel of batter possibilities. The wheel of unfortunate batter outcomes, there I would is. say. Yeah, yeah, because it did end up being unfortunate. That's why he struck out the first time. Uh, it's a credit to Rodriguez and his incredible arsenal of cutter slider and 12-6 curve that he did escape that jam. The two runs that scored against him were not earned because of the Hussein error that prevented the inning from ending four batters in. But this bananas lineup, one through ten, we have waxed poetic about the party animals. This Nanners lineup is in insanely dangerous as well and we saw them catch fire there at the end just too little too late but overall it's been the party animals who have played the best here in durham bulls athletic oh, park yeah. Oh, yeah. now three and one all time in this ballpark and for the bananas they will look to avoid the sweep tomorrow and see if they can make adjustments and see if possibly a day game helps them see the ball a little better from the batter's box yeah that is a fact uh before we shut this thing down. We do need to give away a free pair of shoes, courtesy of our friends over at Zappos. And we got to shout out our cast and crew. Uh, Chad Reese, I don't know if you have sent that to me, but I don't see it yet. 
According to producer, he did. It just hasn't gotten on my phone. I'm still just looking at all of the roasts from the middle of the second inning. That's okay. I've got it on my laptop. Uh, our Zappos free pair of shoes winner tonight. Drum roll, please. Chris Hunt. Chris Hunt, congratulations. You have hunted yourself down a free pair of shoes courtesy of Zappos. Now, when it comes to the cast and crew, it always starts with the Iron Horse of BTV. On the first base camera, Emerson Elmgren. Across the diamond, Cooper Atkinson, one of Durham's best, helping us out doing a bang-up job. On high home, it is Mr. Ben Barks. He has been a part of BTV longer than I have. That's actually why it's called BTV in the first place. It used to be called Ben TV. Uh, on the low home, Lex Fowler, a true Swiss Army knife of Bananas Television all over the place. On center field, McKenna Andrew, excellent work on a mighty important camera. Our utility, Nick Keldy, a.k.a. Cowboy Kel Diggity, miking up all kinds of folks and doing things behind the scenes you could not even dream of. Uh, for our engineer here in Durham, Chris Cormier. Uh, I, we should have shouted him out yesterday. This is a double shout out for Chris Cormier. We also want to shout him out for the two games he helped us out with last year. He's one of the best in the biz. Uh, Chris just... We feel like we're in amazing hands when we come to Durham, because we are. Chris is a pro's pro. That guy absolutely rocks. Uh, for our folks, what the heck did Clayton Franklin do? Where's Clay Pimp on here? Oh, Clayton was helping out. He was with Drake. He was on the Party Animals Dugout broadcast. I've just got Clay Pimp on the mind, and I'm like, I, I got to shout out Clay Pimp. Uh, he must have done an amazing job on the first ever Party Animals Dugout broadcast on Bally Live tonight. Uh, when it comes to the people in the hostess city of the South, our director is Kylie Sadamka calling all the right shots at all the right times. The best in the business. I am so serious about that. Same goes for our technical director, Mr. Griffin Ellis, another man who precedes even Biko in Bananas Television, pressing all the right buttons at all the right times. On the replay, Keegan Woods, you will see it once, you'll see it twice, you'll see it thrice if necessary, because Keegs is gnarly on the sticks. On the audio, Brian Bailey. On the ones and the twos, Brian, excellent work. Everything sounded great to Biko. On the score bug, Quanzi, it's one name. You know him, you love him. He will always dominate whatever job we give him. On the graphics, Dakota Burns said, nailing the graphics tonight and on the statistics being updated on Dakota's graphics. That would be Mikey O'Connor. Who else? Mikey O, that guy is incredible. Our moderators in the chat here on the tube, Colbyte underscore and Scott Thompson, and a special thanks to our video legend tonight, Mr. Yvonne Trezak. Of course, we always have to mention the Italian rap scallion Chris Sachi. Does a whole lot of things behind the scenes, even if he has abandoned us here in Durham, North Carolina, and nothing happens in the YouTube world without the YouTube king, Mr. Zach Bro. Zachariah for short. Uh, thank you so much. The coordinating producer of Bananas Television, Mr. Chad Reese, the man pulling all the strings of this very complicated operation. Thank you so much to our guys getting mic'd up tonight. That would be Jackson Olson, Mr. Ryan Rodriguez. Jake Lee Alios. Oh, I knew I was forgetting somebody. Jake Lee Alios. That is a fearsome threesome if I have ever heard it. Thank you so much to the three of you Palookas. Thanks, Drake, for letting us tune in to the first ever Party Animals dugout broadcast at the end of the first. Josh Tulevsky, you killed it on the color commentary. And boy, did you have a big job of statistical savanting tonight. Biko, is, as much as we roast each other sometimes and even let the chat roast us as well, I love doing this thing with you. You were great tonight. Thank you so much. By the way, if anybody was trying to roast us for our matching shirts, I told the party plaza beforehand, normally when I wake up, the first thing I do is text my beloved broadcast partner and say, what are you wearing? I mean, you know, it's just a... a it's got me on the brain. It's a tradition. Yeah, yeah. What are you wearing? You know, uh, I didn't do that today because I swore yesterday he said he was wearing the blue polo. I definitely trust him. He is the man with a beautiful brain. I, I'm just the guy who, who talks about what I see on the field. Uh, I thought he said blue polo. He said yellow polo. I wore yellow polo. We're probably going to match again tomorrow. And so what? So what about it? There's nothing wrong with that. You can't, it's, it's cool. It's, it's very really cool. cool. It's really cool when we wear the same thing multiple times in the same weekend. People do it. People still do it. Yeah, and I, I will not accept any roasting on that matter. Uh, now that that is behind us, for our executive producers of Bananas <laughs> Television, <laughs> Carrie, Emily, Jesse Cole, as well as Jared Orr, and I am Biko Scal. We will see you tomorrow afternoon, as I mentioned, 12.30 p.m., pregame, 1 p.m., first pitch. 
Party Animals pound the bananas. Five points to three, came down to the wire, but boy, did they kill it on offense. We'll see if they can get the sweep tomorrow, and until then, we'll see you